Chapter 5, Solving a Pedigree Problem. Pedigree analysis can be used to understand the inheritance of a genetic trait when the number of offspring is low, but information about multiple generations is available. As a result, pedigrees, or family trees, are particularly useful in studying inheritance in humans and domesticated animals for which good records are available. A pedigree diagrams parents and their offspring over several generations. Remember that males are depicted as squares and females as circles. A filled symbol is an affected individual, someone who shows the phenotype of interest, and open symbols are individuals who are not affected. A horizontal line connecting two individuals is a mating or a couple, and a vertical line indicates a generation and the resulting offspring or children of the couple. The generations are numbered along the left of the pedigree using Roman numerals. Individuals within each generation are assigned Arabic numerals, shown under each symbol. The first thing to look for when analyzing a pedigree is whether there are unaffected parents who have an affected offspring. Here in pedigree A, the son, 2-1, is affected, but neither of his parents show the trait. We can deduce that the trait is recessive. In pedigree B, we see that the daughter, 2-2, is affected, as is her father, individual, 1-1. If we see that all affected individuals have an affected parent, then we can deduce that the trait is dominant. In many genetics questions, you are asked to determine the probability that an unknown individual will be affected by a particular genetic trait. Let's work through a pedigree shown in Chapter 5 of the text. In this example, a woman, individual 3-2, is pregnant. Since a number of her relatives have the same particular genetic disorder, she wants to know the likelihood or probability that her unborn child, represented by the question mark, will be affected. We can do a careful stepwise analysis of the phenotypes and likely genotypes in the family tree to determine the probability of the child having the trait. Let's start with what we know from the pedigree. Neither the woman nor her husband, individual 3-1, is affected by the genetic trait of interest. The trait is rare, but the woman's brother, individual 3-3, her aunt, individual 2-6, her grandmother, individual 1-4, and her husband's uncle, individual 2-1, are all affected. First, we have to determine how this trait is inherited, whether it is dominant or recessive. Individual 2-6 and her mother, 1-4, are affected but we notice that both individuals 2-1 and 3-3 have the trait, but do not have an affected parent. As mentioned earlier, seeing an affected child with unaffected parents tells us the trait is recessive. Let's label all the affected individuals as little a, little a, since they must be homozygous recessive. Since neither the expectant mother nor the father shows this recessive trait, their child can only be affected if both of them are heterozygotes. So our next step is to figure out the probability that each of them is heterozygous. Let's begin with the mother, individual 3-2. Her parents must both be heterozygotes and have the genotype big A, little a, because her brother is affected by the trait. Since her parents are both big A, little a, what is the probability that she herself is also big A, little a? You may have immediately thought that the answer is one half, since half of the offspring in a cross of two heterozygotes have the big A, little a genotype. But we need to think a little more carefully and include an important piece of information in our analysis. Since the woman herself is not affected, she cannot be little a, little a, and must be either big A, big A, or big A, little a. We note this as big A dash. Among those who are big A dash, two-thirds are big A, little a, and one-third are big A, big A, as we can see in a Punnett square involving two heterozygous parents. So the mother's probability of being big A, little a, knowing that she is not affected by the trait, is two-thirds. Now we turn to her husband, individual 3-1. We have to go back further in the pedigree this time. He is not affected, so he is big A dash. His father, individual 2-3, is unaffected and assumed to have the genotype big A, big A, as the trait is rare and he is marrying into the family. He is unlikely to be a carrier unless there is evidence to the contrary. His mother, individual 2-2, is not affected either. Her parents must both be heterozygous as they had an affected son. 
We can note on our pedigree that the paternal grandparents, 1-1 one, one, and 1-2, one, must both have been big A, little a, and their daughter, 2-2, two, two, must be big A dash. As before, the probability that this individual is a carrier is two-thirds. If she has a two-thirds probability of being big A, little a, then 3-1, who is her son, has a one-third probability of being big A, little a. This is because there's a 50% chance he will have received the little a allele from his mother. We are not quite done yet. The probability that the husband is big A, little a is one-third. The probability that the pregnant woman is big A, little a is two-thirds. In order for them to have an affected child, both of them must be carriers. If both parents are carriers, the probability that their child is affected, that is, has the genotype little a, little a, is one-fourth. We can use the product rule again, multiplying these probabilities to calculate the overall probability that both of them are big A, little a, and that they have an affected child. Thus, the total probability that the child will be affected is one-third times two-thirds times one-fourth, or two-thirty-sixths, which is equal to one-eighteenth. This is the probability that the husband is a carrier times the probability that the expected mother is a carrier times the probability that their child will be affected if both parents are heterozygotes. Let's ask one more question. What is the probability that the child will not be affected? You could calculate this by carefully determining all of the possible ways that the child would inherit one big A allele, which is all that is needed to be unaffected. But it is generally simpler to work out the probability that the child will be affected as we did and subtract this from one. In this scenario, the probability that the child is not affected must be one minus one eighteenth or 17 eighteenths. This is a relatively complicated pedigree question, but by methodically working through the possibilities and recognizing the probabilities from Mendelian ratios, we arrived at a solution. Following the basic steps outlined in the approach illustrated here, you can analyze the majority of pedigrees you may encounter.